I guess, Post Frontier. And today let's talk about leveling and progression in general for Explosive Arrow Ballista. So if you guys don't know already, um, a couple of days ago, I made an updated build guide for 3.18. Now, while I made an almost 50 minute long video, um, in terms of leveling, there wasn't really anything new. I made a few small improvements, but nothing that would really warrant a video. So what I would do here instead is I, I would give you some extra resources to make leveling even easier. And then I would also go a little bit more into item progression in general. Also, just as a side note, for I will be leak starting this build myself over on twitch.tv slash palstron. I will be streaming basically every day. Um, every progress will be on stream. And um, so if you want to follow along, uh, maybe you have some questions on the side or you just want to hang out, um, definitely do so. So let's get right into resources for leveling. Number one, I have my note section in my POB, um, which I also have stuff. So I have the leveling section down here, obviously. I also have stuff like things to look out for, which are very, very important. I have some, some explanations in here, right? Um, down there, I can tell you when you actually should be transitioning, which we're all gonna, also going to talk about in detail in this video. But basically for leveling advice and whenever you don't know what to do, uh, first thing you should look out for is the leveling section in the POB. Also, I'm changing things around on the daily in the POB. So be sure that before the leak starts, grab yourself the latest POB just to be sure that you catch some of the small improvements that I make every day. Number two resource would be uh, my explosive arrow leveling guide from last league where I actually go through the game with you and I kind of cut it down to like 30-ish uh, minutes. Uh, basically, I level from Act 1 to Act 4. And I basically show you everything in this video. Um, it's called hand-holding mode for a reason, uh, from where to get your gems to uh, what like smaller things to think about, like where do you get your attributes. So if you want to be 100% prepared, definitely um, at least skip a little bit through this video, right? It has timestamps on the side, uh, depending on which level I'm at. And I also have some useful, unique items at the end um, that might help you out. And just as the POB, I will link this down in the description. Uh, definitely take all the resources from down there. And then a new resource I added for this league uh, is the PUE leveling planner. And what this one gives you is basically, it shows you exactly from which quest you get what reward. Uh, for example, enemy at the gate, freezing pulse, uh, enemy at the gate, purifying flame, mercy mission, summon phantasms award, and it also tells you how much it costs, right? For example, the Purifying Flame is supposed to be bought from the Vendor. Here it tells you how much it costs. And then you go down, Act 2, you have the same thing, Orb of Alteration. Uh, and whenever you're going to respec, right, I even made a list of everything you need in order to do so. It also shows you what bandit to take and in what order to take your ascendancy nodes. And while this is all already in the POB, both in the POB and the leveling video, this is basically just a website that has a very good overview, right? Um, basically, first you learn from the nodes and you learn from the leveling video. And then once you're playing, you can just have this on your second monitor and easily scroll through uh, while completing these quests. So definitely use all those resources. But now let's talk about the passive tree progression. So if you look down here uh, in my passive trees, here I have all the end game stuff, right? But I also have act one to act 10. So I'll give you a little bit more context to this right now, right? Act one is pretty straightforward. You take damage. The reason I go into cast speed instead of spell damage is I just think it feels better. Uh, if you don't really care about that and you just want to do more damage, you can also go for spell damage. Overall, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you definitely want heart and soul. You don't really have to be tanky at this point, uh, but the mana is pretty damn nice. Now, going to Act 2 over here, uh, all that basically changes is we're taking a little bit more cast speed. I definitely do want to take this and the 50 life mastery, 50 flat life at the start is completely insane. And the reason we take the 6% life note is because we're actually going to path up to Heart of Flame, which will be happening here in Act 3, as you can see. And after we have Heart of Flame, we go down to the left side and we start uh, working towards Ancestral Bond in case you want to respec at some point. But for now, we're just taking Purity of Flesh. So at this point, we are still um, Wave of Conviction plus uh, Holy Flame Totem, right? But then Act 4 comes along and there you go. Now we have uh, Primal Manifestation, we have Sovereignty, and here we should be at roundabout level 40. And after we got these, we will be starting to respec into uh, explosive herbalist. And once again, if you don't know what you need in order to respec, I have it down here. I will go over it real quickly. I would not um, I would not uh, respec until you have at least a storm cloud and if possible also a skirmish on top. This will make your transition very smooth because the thing is explosive arrow scales extremely well with levels so the higher you go the stronger you will get but at the start you obviously don't have any levels you just got explosive arrow at level 28 right. Um, 
And I have a full list of um, uh, gems that you need here. Uh, you need a foil link with these colors, right? And once you have that, you can easily transition. Now, as I mentioned, though, you don't have to respec until maps if you don't want to, right? I really, really like having my main skill as early as possible so I can kind of get a feel for it, kind of can uh, get a feel for the progression, right? But if you want to go cremation Armageddon brand, I mean, this has been a long-standing uh, racing tool that you can definitely use. Then let's jump from Act 4 to Act 5. And as you can see here, we actually went with Ancestral Bond. Only do this if you're transitioning into Explosive Arrow. If you want to do Armageddon Brand Cremation, you obviously don't need it. You will do no damage, right? Um, and now we're working on our Dodd Multi. So at this point, getting Dodd Multi is basically a more multiplier. You have no Dodd Multi, so this is 4% more damage. Plus 6%, 12%, right? These nodes are insane. Definitely take the Fire Mastery as well with the Dot Multi. And then over here, you take the Acrimony. Uh, we do take a little bit of duration just so the arrows have a little bit longer time to stack up. At this point, you're going to be using faster attacks on your Explosive Arrow. So that helps out a little bit. Uh, but you will still not have enough attacks. And you don't even have all your Ballistas yet, right? So you need a little bit of that duration. And after that, we path down here. And if you look at the transition from Act 5 to Act 6 you will see that we have now respect a few points. So this is basically just, uh, we respect Arcanist Dominion, Heart of Soul, and all of the cast speed nodes. So you get two respect points per acts, right? I would really recommend you do these points, then you don't have to spend Book of Regrets later, right? Look up the list of the quests that you need to do in order to get Book of Regrets, right? Um, and so you go down here, right? and you take Ash, Frost, and Storm. Now, Ash, Frost, and Storm will not be in your endgame POB. The reason we're taking it is all res is really nice early, and we're killing all, so we're not going for Lyra, so you really need that res from somewhere. Also, these small nodes give 3% all res, so overall, this will give you a total of 21, and then you go Shaper, and you're waiting for next act. Then we transition into Act 7, which is basically just us going through Constitution. Uh, act 8 which is us going down here. Now, uh, you don't really want a Demic Seal at this point. You're going to take it a little bit later. First and foremost, you want to definitely get Elemental Equilibrium as soon as possible. Just be sure that once you have this Keystone, you can't have any flat added fire damage at all from any source. And you want added cold or added lightning damage somewhere. But now let's look what we do for Act 9, right? So Act 9, now we actually took the Totemic Zeal right after we did this. And we took Avatar of the Hunt. Now, the points on the way to Avatar of the Hunt give you phasing on kill, which is just huge for any totem build because you can run through packs while your ballistas fire behind you. And then we also connect here with Art of the Gladiator. And after Act 9, basically what happens into Act 10 is merely that we fill out the bravery to get a little bit tankier, right? And then we get some pathing notes and we're trying to get down to surveillance. Now, if we see the difference between Act 10 and early maps, what you will see is we're going to be respecting all these points. Um, by finishing the campaign, you will have a total of 20 regret points, which is enough for this. I think you need an extra like two regret orbs or something. So whenever you find them, just use them, right? But if you see the jump from Act 10 to early maps, right? Basically, all of this will be respect. Now, if you don't want to spend that many points for some reason, they are free, right? But for some reason, just never take Heart of Flame, then you're going to save these five points. What I will say is that while leveling, Heart of Flame is just such a nice power boost, and you're going to have a lot harder time leveling without it. But basically, this is all respect. And what we did down here with these points is uh, we went to Surveillance, uh, Panopticon, Ironwood is huge, right? All of these nodes through Golem's Blood. And then we went all the way to the right side and took all the goodies here. And we got our six totem with Watchtowers. And then if you look from early maps to end game, right? All that happens is basically we're filling out some of our life nodes. We're filling out the spell suppress, uh, some armor and evasion here. Uh, we respect Ash, Frost, and Storm. So that's basically all that's happening to get a little bit more uh, tanky from here on out because your damage will be very nice, but uh, your tankiness will have to adjust for yellow and red maps. All right, next up, let's go over itemization. Uh, the one, number one thing that I've heard from people is um, that this build is squishy at times, right? Until you get into endgame and you get all your spell suppression. Now, I think um, I probably miscommunicated this a little bit and didn't emphasize it enough last leak, uh, but I will tell you how you can get through that hump uh, and how to basically make that a non-issue. So early on, um, during leveling, you need Stormcloud and Skirmish. I already wrote that down in the leveling section. I just want to reiterate on that. Uh, get a Tabula as soon as possible. Basically give you that six link, that power strength. The reason why Tabula is important, because your priority on rares should 
always from the get-go be defense. The reason why you felt squishy on this build last league, right after you came out of Act 10, is because look at this, increased life 77%. It's abysmal, right? Uh, and the reason for that is that this tree is very much stretched thin and all your damage nodes are super efficient, but your defense nodes, not so much. So while a lot of builds can just go ahead and take profane chemistry if they feel uh if they don't feel tanky enough or take some life nodes while leveling to feel a little bit less um less squishy right this build really can't you have to get to your plus one totem over here and to watchtowers which stretches you very thin in terms of passive points that concludes though that on the itemization end you should completely prioritize defense and to get a little bit more into that number one go life tab immediately to free up mana so many people delay their tabula for that long do some heisting or some chaos recipe after your act maybe farm the divination cards right tabula is very easy easily accessible nowadays there's a lot of ways to farm it and what that will do is by going life tab is you can get go grace determination defines banner very early but I mean, that's good defense, but you still may need at least a decent life pool to actually facilitate that defense, right? So you need a life roll on basically everything, right? So um, when I say that you should prioritize defense, life roll, and later spell suppression, I mean that those are like mandatory, right? If you have an amulet and it has T1 elemental damage with attacks, T1 damage over time, maybe plus one or something, it still might as well not exist because you need life first and foremost, right? Most of your damage will come from your passive tree. Don't get me wrong. These are all nice stats, right? If you can get them on top of life, right? And on top of spell suppression. But on the number one thing is cap your resistances and also get as much life from your gear as you can. Also, bases matter, right? Evasion and armor is what you scale, right? So it matters if you have like energy shield everywhere that you're not scaling. You're missing out on quite a bit of flat armor and flat evasion. Now, obviously, you can't beggars can't be choosers, right? At the start, sometimes we just drop randomly stuff that we that's not perfect, but that we can use and we don't have to pay anything for. I get it, right? But just be mindful of it. And then the last thing I can't stress enough: do Uber Lab as soon as possible. Uber Lab in this build means um bastion of elements, right? So if I go into endgame here, you should have bastion of elements asap this is going to help you so much as much as your armor is nice to have as much as your grace is nice to have those will not really do anything against like elemental spells right you're not gonna have spell suppression early so in early white and yellow maps right at some point whenever you find your offering to the goddess at the latest before red maps you really wanna get that uh, bastion from uber lab and uber lab is extremely easy because you're a totem build you put down your totems you don't get hit that's it. If you want to know step by step which items you should buy when, right? I did that in the original guide already. I made an item progression list. Here, I want to give you a little bit more tips that are uh, need a little bit more context um, that maybe I kind of left out in the video. Number one, try get 70% plus spell suppression before rad maps, and you should be capped before you do invitations. I think for something like feared, that is kind of the given, but even before that, right? Having that 100% spell suppression, not randomly getting one shot by something that you don't dodge, right? You're a ballista build, I get it. You can dodge mechanics, but still, if you're not that familiar with how these bosses work, having 100% spell suppression can give you a lot more um, leeway there and um, then I would also say that 70% plus spell suppression that's something you should have before red maps because otherwise you die to random stuff like spark mages or some weird ass projectiles that just aren't covered by grace right uh, next up don't get your Daidian Dawn too late Daidian Dawn is a huge damage upgrade it's like 30 to 35% more damage and I guess also don't forget to use uh, catalysts on them right um, so there's catalysts for elemental damage and um, Daedian Dawn has 35%, um, usually as Ignites, you inflict deal damage 35% faster, but with the elemental um, with the elemental quality, it's actually 42, and these are usually extremely easy to get. Now then, something that while progressing through the Atlas will give you a huge power spike is actually the Gull. So uh, what the Gull uh, helmet does is basically it gives you these uh, small shrines that sometimes spawn around you. And those will give you the same bonuses as normal shrines would, just a little bit less, right? But you also get increased effect of shrine buffs on you and you get increased duration. But this also counts for big shrines. So if you couple that with the Atlas passive tree and you take stuff like supplication, which gives you an additional shrine and all the small nodes that give you increased duration, right? Um, you get drawn to power, you get syncret uh, syncretism. 
um, and at the end, maybe even all that glitters. But uh, these two are just the most important ones. If you get all of these, the goal will kind of carry you through maps. I guess you could kind of think about it as sort of a mini headhunter. Now that we have uh, a natural instinct should be your first expensive item. I know you might want to go for um, Polaric Devastation, but I can tell you that a natural instinct is just so much better. So if you look from endgame to cluster endgame, um, this tool is basically what will allow you to still get your phasing and even more damage than a normal jewel would give you while being able to unspec out of all of these points and start ha having enough points to even attempt to get your cluster jewel. Because as we talked about earlier, this, uh, like, we're very point starved, right? So every point counts and getting four extra points towards your cluster jewel, which is very point hungry, is going to be huge so you can get your sleepless sentries. And the reason why it's important you have this before invitations, your cluster setup, right? which is going to come up next. Um, it's very important because then you have your onslaught also against bosses. Because what's going to happen before, right, in the decent gear is you're going to have death rush and you only have onslaught on kill. But uh, once you're at your great gear and you're in like invitations, you really, really want to have that extra 20% attack speed and also the movement speed will help a lot dodging stuff. But yeah, in conclusion, uh, number one, use the leveling resources, right? You have three different resources. You have the POB, you have my old leveling video where I go through everything and you have the POE planner down below so you always know which gems to pick. And probably the biggest takeaway from this video should be prioritize defense on your gear because damage you will have covered on um, your passive tree and your gems, right? So um, the thing is, I can throw out as much as I want, right? As much information as I want. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I do. Uh, you're at least as important. All I can give you is the recipe, right? You have to cook it for yourself. And as complicated as this game can get, right? I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you. At the end of the day, if you care, you will at least do a decent job. And yeah, that's also the note that I will leave this on. I hope I could give you some more insight, maybe a little bit more context to what I was saying in the main build guide. I hope everything goes well at League Start and have a good one. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do stuff like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. But yeah, um, with the League right around the corner, uh, my my excitement is kind of getting a little bit tingly right now. And um, yeah, I hope uh, I can give you some good info. I hope you'll have uh, fun with the build. And uh, I know I will already. Uh, we're going to try some of the new Uber bosses. Once again, if you wanna if you wanna follow along, I will make day one to I don't know day five six updates, uh, so you can look out for that or just check me out on my stream. Uh, but with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.